I'm here at uh, Raven Rock State Park, North Carolina, uh, inside Lillington. Right now I'm taking the Campbell Creek Loop Trail. About two, two and a half miles in, there is a primitive campsite. Got here a little later in the day than I wanted to. It's probably 4.30, maybe almost five now. but a couple of miles shouldn't take too terribly long. Trail starts out with a pretty even, easy downhill until we get to Campbell Creek. One of the things that contributes to some of the features in this part of the state is that this area lies along what's called the fall zone. And what that means is further north and west, you've got harder rocks, uh, uh, more granites, more uh, resilient stones. And toward the coast, you've got softer sedimentary rocks and sand and this region is roughly in between the two where they transition from those tougher rocks to those softer rocks this footbridge takes us over campbell creek the trail's namesake All right, here's why I need to decide. Am I going to go left, uphill, or am I going to go right and enjoy a flatter path and the creek? Yeah, I took the left, the left uh, fork. I figure we'll get some of these hills knocked out, get a good night's rest, and then have the energy I need for tomorrow. Now, Raven Rock is not a giant park as far as trails go, so it's really not going to destroy me. Well, it shouldn't. But still, nothing wrong with building up a little bit of an appetite make the uh, the thought of a, another freeze-dried meal a little less nauseating than it might be otherwise.
here's the something I'm hoping yeah it's the family wilderness camp cut off or spur we still have a little ways to go but closer than we were five steps ago so that's progress right the near falls trail is about a half mile might be one way might be round trip a little spur to a really depending on the river's water level uh, a, a small rapids section of rapids as opposed to what I would typically think of as a legitimate waterfall but I believe that's name it's named that also in part because again of this region's situation within the fall zone so <laughs> yeah it's up coming out here if you take that left fork like I did it would have been downhill which most of you are probably saying duh that's how uh, inclined planes work but yeah I uh, apparently stopped thinking uh, when I chose to go left I think right would have been the, the way to do it but we're more or less here things seem to have flattened out some Family Camp Site 3, that's me for tonight. to get a fire going so that I could have a fire it's just fun to sit and stare at a fire for hours but also because I wanted to make some s'mores but for whatever reason I can not seem to get the fire started every source of fuel out here is damp we've had a lot of rain recently and <sighs> good morning Last night was a pretty good night's sleep. Started to hear a little bit of rain, but not really, if that makes any sense. Um, it's damp this morning, but not wet. Well, no wetter than last night when I couldn't get the fire started. I'm not even going to try uh, to do that this morning. Yeah, I'll just uh, eat a quick breakfast, take down the tent, and uh, get on with the day. One of the primary reasons I wanted a fire last night was to get some s'mores going. Well, that didn't happen, but we're here and I do have some fire in a manner of speaking. So let's go this route and see what we get. I know some people like their marshmallows just literally on fire and blackened. That's just gross to me. I much prefer a nice golden brown color. I can do over a fire, nice nice bed of coals. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Oh, 
pretty pretty consistently. This is the first time I've gone this route, so yeah, that's too late. I already got a little bit of a, a fire there. All right, I'll just call those battle scars. And I know typically people use graham crackers for s'mores because you know that's what a s'more is, but. I got some chocolate chip cookies. I figured maybe I can kill two birds with one stone, get chocolate and the effect. Oh, actually that, that uh, collapses pretty well. It's definitely better than no s'more. If you'll allow me to call this a s'more since it's missing graham crackers and bars of chocolate. It's time to head out toward uh, Lanier Falls, follow the rest of Campbell Creek Loop back to uh, the visitor center, really. And then we'll check out some of the other trails that uh, Raven Rock State Park has to offer, Oof, if I can avoid tripping. All right, I can smell campfire smoke and you can see some haze in the air. I don't know if it's picking up behind me, but I'm going to admit I am jealous because I really wanted that fire. I may just have to invest in some more uh, flammable options for the next time. So we're on the Lanier Falls Trail, which is maybe a, a half mile spur. I think that's both ways in and out. It might be one way, but I think it's both. Anyway, the falls, such as they're called, are more of a, a spot of rapids on the Cape Fear River as opposed to what I typically think of as a waterfall. I think I mentioned that yesterday, but I can't remember. And uh, also it could be that it uh, gets its name from the fact that this region sits on what's considered the fall zone between the uh, foothills to the northwest and the coast to the uh, southeast. From here, you can see we've got a pretty good shot of the near falls. Actually, the water level seems to be pretty good to actually get a sense of uh, a waterfall, such as it is. Yeah, we just had to climb down a pretty uh, slippery muddy slope just to get uh, down to the I don't even know if you can really call this a bank you can kind of see this rock ledge that's what I'm standing on all in all pretty cool
think we'll start by checking out the fish traps. That's just a little bit past where you would turn right onto the Raven Rock Loop Trail. So we'll hit the fish traps and then come back up and get down to Raven Rock. We are coming down the uh, fish traps trail, started our descent toward the river. Should be there shortly. I don't know if you can hear it, if the mic is picking up the uh, sound of water just yet or not, but uh, we'll be there soon. And I don't know if this is 100% accurate, but I believe it's called fish traps because back in the day, the, uh, uh, I think Tuscarora Indians used to frequent this area and they would set up like a, almost like a, a wicker net of sorts in these channels carved into the rocks. So as fish were going down, they would get caught in those baskets. And I presume that that would have been prior to the 1700s. I think that's when the first uh, Europeans started uh, recognizing this area. I think, not 100% not on my dates there. Right here, you can see one of the channels between these rocks as it flows down on its way toward the Atlantic Ocean. And so right through here would have been a great place to set up a fish trap, hence the, the name. Now, I can't see it, but just across the river here are the remains of the Northington Ferry Lock and Dam that would have made navigating this part of the Cape Fear by boat simpler and safer. But again, a hurricane knocked all that out in 1859 and uh, they just never rebuilt it. Coming up from the fish traps now, well, now it'll be a left onto the Raven Rock Trail, Raven Rock Loop Trail. But coming up from the fish traps is a surprising amount of gain elevation wise. Ah. <laughs> and when the rocks are slick, it's, you get to do it twice. Finally back up from the fish traps and we are taking the Raven Rock Loop. That'll bring us out to the Raven Rock. behind me but 
Up to the north of ways, the Cape Fear actually starts where the Deep River and the Haw River come together at a place called Mermaid Point. I guess back in the day, there were a lot of mermaid sightings out there. Anyway, in the fall, late fall, you can usually get a better view of the river itself when some of the leaves are off the trees, plus the colors. We are headed down to Raven Rock proper now, where we can see that uh, giant uh, crystalline structure, as they refer to it, that uh, rises about 150 feet above the uh, uh, shore and actually stretches about a mile along the Cape Fear. I don't know what the uh, Tuscarora peoples or anyone prior to them might have uh, called this landmark, but uh, until uh, until 1854, I believe, it was known as Patterson's Rock on the account of a uh, European settler who was canoeing down the Cape Fear. His canoe capsized and he managed to climb ashore under what's now called Raven Rock and it uh, took his name. So it was called Patterson's Rock until, like I said, 1854. And then they, whoever they happens to be, uh, renamed it to Raven Rock on account of uh, numerous ravens that used to roost uh, along the ledges uh, on its upper reaches. All right, so here we are at the base of Raven Rock. Let me see if I can come down a little bit closer to the shore so we can turn around and get a more encompassing view. Yeah, I don't know that we're going to, given the trees. But like I said, that uh, reaches 150 feet above the river and stretches for about a mile along its banks. We are climbing the stairs back to the trail itself and I don't remember the exact count, but I believe it's around 134, 136 stairs from uh, top to bottom, bottom to top, however you're, I guess you gotta take them both ways. 130 plus is a whole lot less obnoxious than three or 500 or whatever it was out at a Stone Mountain State Park. Top of the stairs. We are just about winding down the rest of the Raven Rock Loop Trail. Should be back to the parking area pretty soon. So anyway, that is a little bit of Raven Rock State Park. I didn't catch all of it. There's a handful of trails, plus the whole north side, which is more bridal trails, on the opposite side of the uh, Cape Fear River. So anyway, I hope uh, you enjoyed following along. I appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.